Welcome to the official podcast. I am your host, Andrew. We have, as always, hosts Jackson, hosts Charlie, and hosts Kaya. And we are the podcast where we talk about literally anything except hypotheticals. For the love of God, <laughs> I, I, I've now seen the light. I will never be bringing up a hypothetical ever <laughs> fucking again. Hold so you know your word. Hypothetically, Charlie isn't here. I'm right here. He's I was giggling standing about. right next to me. What are you talking about? Yeah. Oh, I don't. Wait, are you in the same room? Yeah, we're in the studio. Yeah. Got the baffling on the walls and everything. Hung it up with uh, picture hanging strips. What a useless detail. There's he, He's making a joke. There's no baffling or picture hanging strips. But there is a studio? No, uh-huh, there's no studio. I fooled you twice. I'm at my apartment. Charlie. Hypothetically, if we did have a studio, what would you think of it, Andrew? I'd be impressed. The only the only thing I want for sure in a studio is not just a, an audio setup. I would want a little booth with soundproof walls that we could go in and record stuff. A little booth? What do you mean? Wouldn't the studio like, be a booth? So some people have like just st- sound studios where they have like a, a keyboard and four monitors with speakers and a microphone over and all that shit and soundproof padding mm-hmm. around it. I don't want that. If we get a studio, I want a little booth, a recording booth. So we can step inside, and it's got all the soundproof walls and a little microphone in there, and then everyone else sits outside on the panel, and they're like, all right, you're ready to go. I want that shit. You, wait, wait, wait. You want a full team outside to watch you in your booth? <laughs> what? So you, is, is the booth just for you? No. We all record outside, no. and you go into your booth so that you can have absolute silence? Yeah, what well, is this? no, but no. Okay, okay. So you know a recording booth where, like, we, typically for music studios? I know a recording booth, yeah, yeah for music So lives, if we yeah. set up a studio... I don't, I don't just want, like, where you go, oh, and this is my studio, and it's like a computer with, I don't know, a microphone over it and a keyboard and some, like, DJ equipment and a bunch of sound pad, soundproof pads on the walls. I want us to go legit. I want us to install mm-hmm. an actual recording booth. Like, literally no podcast does. <laughs> yeah. It yes. would be breaking new ground. For a reason. <laughs> well, what we would all, what, what we would do is we'd write the podcast Wait, out beforehand. But... Aren't recording booths only used for like solo people? Like exactly. only one person goes. There. So what? We'd have four different <laughs> yes, sort of booths now you're in, the, in the corner. Yes. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. I like you'd have awesome. all the windows facing the center of the room, so we could all stare at each other yeah. in our solo booths. And they're all, and they're all and they're all soundproof, so we all wear headphones and we pipe each other into our ears. Oh, great! We, we should can... also have like an escape dungeon while we're at it, like an escape hatch. It in might case be shit hits the fan. It might be impractical, but we would have the nicest sounding podcast audio of all fucking time. I'd still find a way to get Fuck some noise up. in there. <laughs> you could bring your orchestra in. <laughs> Jackson has a little man who just opens the door behind him and throws objects in there while he's recording. <laughs> bring some sand in his pocket to throw at the mic. I found a drum set. That's what my first acquisition will be. I need to expand my noise team a little bit. <laughs> if you could What's- have any noise on your team, what would it be, Jackson? I, I would really love like a a big cat, you know, like a lion or something. Like just hear that roar in the background so that it sounds like I'm in the safari or something. I think that would add a lot to the production. It'd also be cool because no one would guess it's an actual lion in your house. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I could just, <laughs> I could get like a soundboard or something, but no, I want the real cat there. That leads yeah. to a, that's, we could kind of jump off of that. It, I don't know if we've talked about it. If you had an absurd amount of money but you had to use it on something useless, what would you do? So you, yours is sound booths. Well, mine mine would go beyond that, but do you want me to dive into details? <laughs> I'd make it even more useless. <laughs> I've, 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 I've leveled out this plan. So so not only would it be sound booths, I would hire the London Philharmonic, probably the greatest orchestra of all time, and I would put each and every one of them in their own sound booth, <laughs> and I would have them record covers of 90s pop songs. That would make them worse, not better. Significantly worse. <laughs> Shut up. We'll figure out the details. Orchestras, they need to play off of one another. <laughs> All right. We put them in one giant sound booth. But the conductor's that's, outside. That's also bad. They, you know, they're used to the echo and all the little reverberations. All right. We put them... In- we put them in a giant echoing sound booth. Andrew, they're already in the <laughs> optimal environment. You're just trying to handicap them. <laughs> I, I have to prove they really are the best orchestra of all time. <laughs> Here they are skydiving and still playing beautifully. <laughs> What's that I hear? Backstreet Boys. That's not expected. No, like, I've, I've, always, I've always wanted to uh, get like an orchestra to just record like really shitty pop songs, but in beautiful tear-jerking renditions. I think that'd be fun. 
What a boring aspiration. I'm, I'm okay, not... fucking fucko. What's your idea? What do you mean? Uh, hang on. Do you mean like... That's already a thing. You can go on YouTube and search for an orchestral version of any song on the planet mm -hmm. right yeah, now. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, like, but those are like those are like just dudes using synth instruments, and not all of them are great. MIDI. Yeah, some of them are not MIDI. Some of them. There's like 27 different orchestras doing the Zelda soundtrack, for example. But I'm not talking the Zelda soundtrack. I'm talking like shitty like 90s techno songs that oh. no one cares about anymore. Songs where like only four okay. people are gonna realize what I'm doing. Okay, I feel you. Yeah, I think that'd be fun. But now we got to go to Charlie because apparently he's got the greatest idea. No, yeah, I just what's think, your idea, big boy? I just think yours is boring. I don't know. If you what's had all idea? this money to spend on something useless, why, why have shitty covers of pop music? Because he likes shitty not, covers of pop music. I'm not music. saying that's the end all be all thing to do with the money. I'm saying just one thing you would do uh, with all the money. Okay. An idea. I thought you're. I thought you're pouring yeah. all of your resources into oh, that. Oh God, no! Well, isn't it? Isn't it infinite? You got infinite money, so yeah, exactly. Okay, so the the stipulation is in in this hypothetical. I know everyone. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. Andrew, I'm Andrew, sorry. We're past six minutes. Minutes. Forgive me. Well, I'll wrong. keep this one. <laughs> I'm wrong. I'll mm -hmm. keep this one simple. Uh, you are granted a <laughs> billion dollars, but it from like Bill Gates. But he writes you a note and he says you have to spend it on something silly, or I'm taking it back, and you don't get it. You don't understand free will. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Gates is in the, another location in the room with you, therefore your decisions will be different. Twins aren't the same person, Andrew. Oftentimes they even have different names. <laughs> I, I think I'm keeping this one simple enough that we could have a friendly discussion. Oh my god. How come he's still on the podcast? I complained in two comments and they still won't kick their friend out. Oh, oh, Kaya, you don't know the extent of some of these people. They track me down on every single fucking social media in the world. I, I got a, I got a message on fucking, what's that app that you download if you don't want to give your Twitter. phone number out to start texting on your phone? WhatsApp, WhatsApp. Yeah. Oh, WhatsApp, yeah. I got a fucking message on that to which I have not even used for over two years from someone who was like, hey, I'm a fan of the podcast. Anyway, here's my answer to the clone question. No, man, Clone Gates is, is, was a beast on its oh own. Oh my I God. Mean, that, that got more backlash than any other previous like, it was incredible. not even Tate Gate, like Andrew Tate's episode or whatever the guy's name was. Not even that oh. got this much buttered. <laughs> Good God. I don't understand. This generated so much traction. <laughs> God, Andrew showed me his Andrew showed me some DMs. It was it, it was something else. Oh my god. I, I, I can understand I can understand people like wanting to, you know, comment about their thoughts on the thing, but the way that they yeah, did it was completely I just don't get it. Like, I, I completely 100% understand people saying like, here's my opinion, or even like, Andrew, you're wrong, and here's why. But the pure virile bile spewing from some of these people, <laughs> literally, some people used it as like the beginning of their scientific thesis on why I'm actually <laughs> retarded. <laughs> It's ridiculous. They, they write this paragraph or two proving I'm wrong. And I never said I was right. Like, I, I might have been a bit, I don't know, pushy about my side because I wanted to get you guys thinking about it. But I never said I was completely right. But some of these people are like, here's my hypothesis and here's my evidence to prove it. And therefore, I can clinically say that Andrew has a low IQ and is probably in the fourth grade. <laughs> and in, all, in their defense, it was a very convincing report. <laughs> yeah, it was very well worded. <laughs> Every single time, sponsored by Charlie. Anybody? It's usually you <laughs> and me, Andrew. But any any single time, one of us. I don't want to rule out Charlie or Jackson either for this. But it's one of us does something silly or says something that's you know gets somebody butt hurt. I just don't understand the get rid of them comments. I know. No, no, no. Like this podcast, as soon as even one of us leaves, it's over. It's not gonna be. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna be kicking friends off this podcast let alone because some loser on the internet told us to <laughs> okay i'm not gonna what do you think is gonna happen like me and charlie and jackson we're gonna go on youtube.com <laughs> we're gonna read the comments as andrew's a cringy cunt i'll, I'll be like oh you know he, he's making a good point maybe he's weighing us <laughs> down let's get a, a, rid of andrew everybody block him we're no longer friends with him the the one that always gets me the one that always fucking gets me is they think it's all about fame and star power, where they're like, you know, they should just get rid of Andrew and replace him with Jacksepticeye. 
Bring in a, <laughs> it, would, it would bring in a lot of new yeah, viewers, and he's those. he's far more talented than Andrew. It's like, do, do they not understand that this is a podcast of four man friends? Wait, you get it, the it's, not of those? Fucking, it's not a fucking it's not a fucking business. No, I put that in every. I've seen them. I've seen them a lot. Like uh, people will oh. say, get rid of uh, Andrew or Kai and replace them with uh, X famous guy or something. Which oh. someone Pie or Grade A Under A or any one of those, yeah. any one of those Markiplier. Like, <laughs> oh god. The ones the, the I mean I understand if they say replace him with Alex like that makes sense that, that's that makes yeah that's, that's a that's a joke that's a good joke that's a good joke yeah. but like when they're, when they're dead serious like you should kick this guy out and just I don't know just bring back fucking uh, only use me blade he was so cool back in the day it's his <laughs> turn to come back any any of those any I don't understand they think we treat this like a business like this is a fucking <laughs> clock in clock out type deal no. It, it's, yeah. it's a fun and little your, show that we your do. Your performance in the last three episodes—it hasn't been up to quota. Oh. I'm afraid we're gonna have to. We're gonna now, have to let you. I'm not saying any of this because off camera employee they called me in. You. Yeah, they gave me my employee evaluations early and said I'm not cutting it. I need I need to tell 80 percent more date stories. I know my quota's not met, but but yeah. fuck me, I just don't get. Like, what is this power fantasy they have? They're like, Charlie should kick all of his friends off the podcast and make a podcast between him, Bill Gates, Keanu Reeves, and the 1999 Harlem Globetrotters. <laughs> like, what <laughs> the, the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> I love that comment where people are like, Charlie should just kick off his friends and just do it a one-on-one with these <laughs> yeah, guests. Yeah, that too. It's not- Charlie, Charlie can't even edit this. <laughs> 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 What are you talking about? He'd have to resort to VHS technology like a caveman. <laughs> Charlie's going to come up to my apartment. He's going to drive here in person because he doesn't want to tell me over the phone. He's going to say, Andrew, I have bad news. I, I, I'm, We're kicking you off the podcast, but uh, can you do me a favor and just keep editing? <laughs> we, I, I really need you on the tapes, man. I, I still don't understand how it works. Uh, well. Audio waves. I'm, What's I'm that? gonna tell you guys why why it, uh, they think this is gonna happen for some reason. There's other YouTubers. Well, it's the it's the culture on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. a lot of culture. Yeah, if a, a YouTuber like let's say you know the Funhouse podcast recently went under fire, like they, <laughs> they'll take something like that seriously. Like if it, if it all fell on one man's shoulders, they'll really look at that and be like, well, you know what? Maybe maybe they're onto something. You know, because they don't view it as just something where friends get together and do this it's because it is it's a business to them it's, it's business it's yeah. treated like yeah. a business whereas here it, i think it plays it doesn't make sense it's not even that no it's not even a business or a non-business perspective it's simply you're not right you can go fuck yourself you mm-hmm. don't get to make the calls go fuck yourself they don't get to make the calls but they do have power let's say uh uh, using the funhouse this, example again, the, everyone stops. Yeah, with the funhouse example, that was an entire community up yeah. arms about it. Basically, yeah. well, they there's, were there's a huge wrong. difference. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's not still even the same uh, example that I'm talking about. Somebody who doesn't even make a mistake is literally just I was offended, yeah. and then ten people cry, well, yeah. and that's it. Yeah, there's an entire difference well, sure. between a, a whole audience shift and just a few people complaining. Yeah, yeah. Not to mention they don't, they don't have any power. God damn it. They have as much power as you give them. If you yeah. cry in apologies and make a tearful video every time somebody bitches at you, then yeah, you're giving them that power. Otherwise, that they don't have a confused. power. I yep. also hate this attitude that these fucking faggots have where each time they complain, they act like they're talking for the entire audience. Like they just stepped in front of the crew. You know how in movies, like the rebellion will have one guy coming out of the crowd and he's like the leader. Like, don't worry, everybody. I'll be the martyr. I'll tell them. I'll tell the official boys that Andrew needs to be kicked off and everybody's like <laughs> cheering behind them, raising their fists. Like it's, fucking Spartacus oh. and Braveheart. No, you're alone. You're talking for yourself. Fuck off. The, the other thing I never understand is they don't look at it from Charlie's perspective. Because, I mean, let's be honest. It's, it's, there's never any complaints of this nature about Charlie because it's his fucking channel and podcast, right? So, well, it's it, not my podcast. It's our yeah, okay, podcast. Okay, no. Now you're starting. Not, not oh the right, yeah, yeah, No, I fucked up. Get back to no, the comments, Andrew. Sorry. It's mutiny. Sorry. No, I, I meant he's the origination of it. He's where the, the channel it's on. He's where, the admittedly, the bulk of our audience comes from. You get the idea. So, but I, I they, they don't look at it from your perspective, Charlie, where they're like, you need to kick Andrew off the podcast and just never talk to him again. He's the worst fucking human. <laughs> it's like, they don't think in the back of their mind, maybe, maybe we're friends. Maybe we talk outside of this podcast. Maybe, you know, there's more to us than just talking once a week for an hour. You know, who knows? Maybe. Yeah. Like, they just don't take a second or two to just realize what they're doing. What they could do is realize they need to get a job. And where can they get a job? Well, I think they can get it at. Take it away, Charlie. 
ZipRecruiter.com. Ooh. Ooh. That, Slash official. I had a little energy to it. Tell me about it. it, Charlie. How can ZipRecruiter.com turn losers into men? Well, ZipRecruiter is known for this metamorphosis from the mm-hmm. virgin to the <laughs> chad. It's known to get you off the couch <laughs> and into an office. 80% Ooh. of applicants find a job. Tell them about it, Andrew. I, I just want to back up on that point. 80 fucking percent. That's actually a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, it's that's a, a high genuine high. high you don't have to spend money. your life sitting in front of a screen on Reddit typing angry rants. You could get a job and get money. Move out of <laughs> no, your you parents' house. You could get a house. job doing that. You could get a job doing that probably with ZipRecruiter. If, you, if you're that passionate about writing angry comments, I'm sure there's a market there. We can there even is, flip yeah. the script here. Do you want to pay someone to rant for you? You can recruit people through ZipRecruiter. It works either way. Look. Where do they go, though? They Okay, so they go to ZipRecruiter.com. But if they go to ZipRecruiter.com slash official, ZipRecruiter.com slash official, that's right, ZipRecruiter.com slash official, they can try it for free. So, so let me get this straight. We get a free 80%. That's not even like just a passing grade. That's a fucking solid B minus for free. In recruitment nice. rates. That's amazing. That's fucking great. It's the smartest way to hire folks. If you're looking for work or if you're looking for someone to work for you, ZipRecruiter is really just the best option. It's efficient. Go try it out. ZipRecruiter.com slash official. Uh, ZipRecruiter.com slash official. Do Businesses that. Businesses of all size trust ZipRecruiter for their hiring Dot needs. Slash official. What were you going to say now, Jackson? Shit, I forgot. Your point oh. on uh, differing audiences uh, not understanding no, 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 no. who we are as people. Oh, I was going to say, I, I can kind of understand it, though, because they only digest one hour of us each week, maybe. Mm-hmm. They don't really understand, like, the... Di- I, it'd be hard when you're watching that much YouTube because you're, you know, lonely and sad and you sit at home all day <laughs> watching YouTube. So I, I guess I could understand where they're coming from, but I still don't excuse their, like, their mean behavior towards yeah, it's, it's specific not excuse, people. Though. It's the same argument we had before where they think that just because a guest sneezes the wrong way on the podcast, they fucking hate us for life. To me, it's similar with the Gibby thing, right? When we had Noah Monk on last week, mm-hmm. uh, he talked about how Good people guy. can't tell the difference between him as a h- actual human and him as an, you know, Entertainment. Uh, yeah. Gibby. Yeah. And, Gibby. you know, the reason is, uh, you know, he's a... Yeah, he's an actual person, but most people who watch a TV show, they're not going to go look up who actually is playing this character, right? Especially if they're children. They just see this mm-hmm. face, and it's, you know, Gibby's face. It's Gibby from now on. So what they do is the next time they see Gibby's face out there in public, they're going to yell at him and shout, hey, Gibby, take your shirt off. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's kind of similar with us. You get an hour, an hour and a half of us being mm-hmm. these, you know, characters where I'm not saying we're acting, we're, we're definitely not acting, but we're also definitely not being 100% ourselves. It's a comedy podcast, so, you know, everything is a little exaggerated. Everything is a joke. You know, we try to turn everything into a punchline. And, and, you know, you have to be able to tell that apart that maybe, maybe there's more to these four individuals than the 2D characters that I listen to for two hours. Maybe I don't like hearing about emus every single message. Yeah, that's that's another <laughs> no, that's, good that's, one. That's 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 ridiculous, Jackson. Like, yeah. Please keep sending them. Yeah, that's the thing yeah. though. I I don't excuse you for not thinking of that yourself. You should be able to think that Jackson doesn't really bathe in dumpsters with naked children, or that Andrew doesn't well, really challenge a girl to a Magic the Gathering duel on the first date, or that Charlie <laughs> doesn't really call his mom to reach high places. <laughs> These are all really bad examples, yeah, Kai. Kai yeah, how are, did you nail all of these hidden facts? <laughs> <laughs> Charlie's not actually short. It's just an act. <laughs> I'm actually short. <laughs> He's just you get the idea. All right, well, yeah, let's move on. Let's just, the gist of it all yeah. is when you go online and leave these angry comments, the, the result is that we screenshot them and share them in our group chat to laugh at you. That is completely correct. At least make it funny, man. Send me some death threats. Yeah, send it. If you're creative with it, that's amazing. But just like quoting what we've said, you know, what do I, I don't know what to say to that. Thanks. Andrew, if someone sent you a death threat, you'd be behind yourself. I've, s- I've gotten so death scared. threats. <laughs> you'd get a private eye. Yeah. <laughs> Corroborate <laughs> the authenticity. You want to talk. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Well, you Charlie, know, we'll bring this oh, up. That's I'm a good question, Charlie. I'm scared of a, like, yeah. dog show stalker. 
<laughs> yeah, so I, I think that's something we should talk that's a good, about. Yeah, that's here. a good topic. Go so yeah, let's we brought get to the, the bottom of this. We brought this up into in the hangout not too long ago. Kai is quite the uh, the practical jokester, and I don't mean it in the way that these <laughs> virgin YouTubers have kind of perverted the definition. Kaya is a true and blue practical prankster, the one that'll have a stalker come to your home just to scare you as a joke. He is a man who knows how to get a joke across. And he's, I've, I've become victim to quite Andrew a few of them. there, was he? No, he wasn't there for it. Wait, 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 wait. Tell the whole story from the beginning. I don't know well, about this, actually. I've fallen victim to many of Kaya the Swift's pranks, and they're, 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 they're well done. The, the one I talked about in the Hangout, though, is... He did a pretty simple one. A while back, I made a video on a dog show thing, just joking around with the how, dog how show long? thing. How long? For context. About three years ago. Okay, three. so you, you were starting to come out of your shell as kind of... Well, no, my name, everything, all that was still very private. And there was okay. one guy on YouTube, his name was like Boner Badger or something <laughs> like that. He, he had blown the case wide open. He caught me red-handed and he posted my shit on YouTube, but no one really saw it. It had like 20 views. And I shared it with Kaya because I was like, Kaya, fuck, he's on to me. And he's like, don't worry about it, Charlie. A month later, I got a message from some random handle with like Omadi Jehosen as the name or something. And the message was a, a really scary death threat. And it was like, it was about it was about the dog show video I made. And he's like, I don't like how you disgrace this honorable sport. He was feeling the dog's balls to check if they were real. Not nudicles, not nudicles. And it was just such an authentic, like, authentic threat. I couldn't help but take it seriously. Plus, I'm pretty scared about pretty much everything anyway. So I went to Kaya, like, confiding in him, like, dude, I think it might be the end for me. Someone's, someone's on to me. They're, they're coming for me. And he's like, don't worry about it. But I think you might want to take this one seriously. He looks like he's off his hinges. He's a loose cannon. <laughs> You don't know when he might strike. You could be in a ghillie suit in your bushes now. You'd never know. And then event- that didn't like that didn't send off alarms. That Kaya, this is the one thing Kaya takes seriously and warns you against. No, because I don't know. He he'd done a couple pranks in the past before, so I guess I should have connected dots. But I don't know. It just was scary to me at the time. And then eventually, I, I started connecting dots. You know, the nudicles they weren't adding up. They they were coming out real dog balls, and I figured out it was Kaya. Well, don't skip the part where you apologized Okay, yeah, for will. mercy. Yeah, tell <laughs> okay. us the wrap-up here. Well, I wanted to avoid that part. I replied to Kaya's message, and I was like, look, man, uh, I really didn't know. I'm sorry for my ignorance on dog show ethics. I, I really... I'm su- we can can we talk about this further? You know, and I was just really afraid and apologetic. Where did he See, message Kai, you? This is why YouTube is apologize. Where did he yeah. message you? On YouTube, back when the uh, messaging system oh, wasn't pure trash. Oh, when people actually check that shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's okay. a fun game. Let's actually check that fucking message system and see if anyone's written us since 1992. <laughs> I completely forgot about that. I don't even know where to find it anymore. To oh be honest God, man. I, uh, didn't I just scrap it completely? No, it's still I, I don't alive, think it's there. I think. No, it is there. Yeah, I check it yeah. almost every week to see if Kickspassion has ever replied to me. Yeah, go to a community in Creator Studio community and messages. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, I shouldn't have done it. There's more people talking to me about the clone shit here. <laughs> oh, no. I thought <laughs> I escaped them all. <laughs> they found the one place I wouldn't look. How do they navigate that, that <laughs> maze? You shouldn't have checked in, like, for 10 years, it would have been a nice time capsule. Yeah, that would have been super cool. What, did they hate me the for 10, 10 years ago? Wow. That's sort of a deal. But yeah, Andrew, did I ever tell you about my plan to prank Charlie anew? Re- uh, not recently, but like, I don't know. No, he was he's due. He missed the, the, the hangout. The big 2017 one. Yeah. No, I was about to do this, right? Uh-huh. I, I don't know if I told Jackson, but... No, you, you was, definitely told me. I remember yeah. you, I think you... I think you asked me to like confide in Charlie and say that it was authentic and he should be worried. Yeah. No, I was in the planning stages. But then <laughs> something came up during the podcast where you guys said, you you know, pr- pranks are too serious sometimes. They're just dumb when you're scaring people for real. And then, you know, that just, you know, I kind of went like, eh, okay, I guess he wouldn't really appreciate the humor in this. <laughs> but uh, my plan <laughs> put was... put away the gag and nipple clamps. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, so my plan was to get you guys kind of involved. At the time, you still lived like an hour away from Charlie, right? By by car, I think. Uh, if an we're talking about before I moved to Tampa, I lived like four yeah. hours away. Well, okay, but you were still like able to visit him. Yeah, every couple I could of, get there. Yeah, once in a while. My plan was to recruit you and make 
literally think that the stalker is after him. So, <laughs> you know, he at the time lived like in a apartment, pl- like dorm kind of place, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'd have you go over to his place and like carve threats into his door. <laughs> Or, it's already so extreme. <laughs> or I know, right? Or smear. I don't know. Cut your finger a little, and with your own blood, right? Like watch out on his door. And then I thought about God. also recruiting. And then Tiana. Charlie calls the fucking police. <laughs> no, hang on. Even, then, even if it is Andrew, I'd still call the police on Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> even if I caught you doing it, the, the police would be coming. <laughs> and then at the time, I. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know where, but I, I Tiana added me on something. I think it was Facebook, because you know uh-huh. she's just a nice human being and she thinks so are we. And I was gonna recruit her into <laughs> taking photos of Charlie when he's asleep. Oh my! So God. I could edit them and make them look like they were taken from outside the window, oh. and then send those <laughs> photos to him over YouTube. Like, you, you know, you you're really cute when you sleep. Wow. What is the end game here? I just scaring him for like a week or two and then telling him that he was then, a goober. Yeah, he's he's always <laughs> been one to keep ramping it up, so I'm excited to see what his next plan is where he like sends me to the moon or something. But <laughs> the first prank he ever played on me was something so innocent like a grade schooler would do. He sent me a, a text from a Skype number I didn't recognize saying I won League of Legends riot points. And I was like, Kai, I got riot points. He's like, no, that was me. I was like, did oh. you re- Wait, did you really fucking fall for that? Come on. <laughs> That's the that's a scam to begin with. <laughs> yeah, click this link to re- redeem your riot points. Just put in your social. I, no, I he didn't. Uh, Kai's probably got your password now. I remember that. Well, I do. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> I don't know if I still do. I don't know if he's changed it from like. I'm not gonna say it, but it's basically like X Y X Y X Y X Y and repeat yeah. that three more times. I don't oh, use yeah. that anymore, though. Oh, uh, thank Christ. But no, at the time, League of Legends had like a Halloween event, so I just sent Charlie a message mm-hmm. saying, you won the Halloween event. You were one of the chosen hundred people. Uh, you know, Charles blank, last name. Mm-hmm. And I believed it. And I was super excited that to tell nice. Kai and share skins with him. Jesus. Aww. Aww. And then, then I got pranked by him. The very man I wanted to give his skin to. But yeah, you know, the plan, I think it was destined to fail from the start. I don't think I could have recruited Tiana. I don't think she could have kept her mouth shut. Yeah, I don't I think, like Andrew, you would have, would have had it in you to keep a straight face. or I would have cracked. I'm, I'm just telling yeah. you now. It, it would have been hard. Although, although on that, it. Charlie, I, I can fucking destroy Charlie with poker face. I, I beat him. I, he lost a bet to me today. Yeah, I did. Yeah, purely on poker face and bullshitting. Well, no, you didn't bullshit. You were telling the truth. That's quite the opposite. You didn't bullshit me. You you told the truth. Or or did I? What was it? (laughs) It was was just some dumb bet. Uh, He bet me that he'd already gone top golf two days earlier with a friend, and I didn't believe that he did, and he was convincing me he did. And then oh, uh, we bet on it. This, well, I, we well, Pia, you got to so realize cute. that Charlie and I have a competitive spirit about the stupidest fucking shit. We we were driving back from a Smoothie King, uh, which I mean, it's just a fucking like you have know, smoothie health juice bullshit whatever place. And uh, I ran inside to get our orders so we didn't have to park. And they had a sale on adding like mix in supplement bullshit like weight gain or protein powder or fiber blend mm-hmm. or whatever so i just said fuck yeah. it throw throw a bunch in mine throw a bunch in his and i took it back and i gave it to him and eventually we started talking about the smoothies and i went yeah i put all the supplements in yours and he's like no you didn't i'm like yeah i did no i really did i, I just went up they had a, sp- a sale and i just said you know put put all this in his and this in mine and he's like no i know you're fucking with me no and this went on for like what 20 minutes charlie it was a good dispute. So, I think Kai has kind so of like did ingrained you a, an air of skepticism in me over everything now. <laughs> and it eventually led to where I said I would fish my receipt out of the trash to prove it. But we we, we just get competitive on the most meaningless bullshit. It's it's less competitive. It's and, not even yeah. That's not even yeah. It's, it's just more me not believing anything anymore. Kai is ruining just you two flirting. I am I I am proud though that I've apparently then taught you some skepticism. I like that. That's nice. I mean, it's, it's skepticism when someone's telling me shit or I receive stuff. Yeah, I, I'd always been, you know, questioning things, you know, is my penis really as small as I think it is? Stuff like that. But you'd really ingrained in me 
you know, maybe I shouldn't always take things at face value, which is a very yeah. useful trait. Every to have. once in a while, he checks Tiana's body for a zipper, so it's not really <laughs> me in a disguise. Does he check his hair to make sure that it's real? Well, I don't know if he does. Because you know, the way that he could make sure is if he used hims. Well, if it's full and luscious hair, then he couldn't really tell if it's real or not if he used hims. Hair loss is a serious problem sweeping the nation. That's right. You might not know it, but you might have a bald man in your town. Ew. Ugh. Does like, he at least brace, have to brace yourself for this fact. There's there's a registry, and there's it's it's basically a terrible, terrible plague. But it's not the end of the world because it's not possible for some people. How? They use forhims.com. Tell them what forhims is, Kaya. Well, you know, you might go through life thinking, hey, I'm young, I'm never going to lose my hair. You're wrong. Men lose their hair, it's just the reality of nature. And you might think, hey, maybe I'll look good. No, probably not, dude. You're not Jason Statham, okay? There's very few men who actually look good bald. So you want to hang on to that hair for as long as you can. And again, you might think, hey, I'm not 35. What the fuck am I going to need, like, hair pills for? Well... Eh, you know, better to be on the safe side and also start it early. Keep it stronger for as long, uh, you know, for longer. So go to forhims.com slash official and you can get medication that you would otherwise be paying hundreds of dollars for if you go to the doctor and maybe tell him some embarrassing problems. Forhims.com slash official is also selling products for your skin. Maybe your skin looks like somebody who just, you know, shot you with diarrhea bullets. Or maybe you have... <laughs> Penile <laughs> problems. And unfortunately, that diarrhea, they were packing some blood in the stool. Oh, yeah. Ugh. It's really, it's a pain a pain in the ass to get the diarrhea and the bullets. It takes a very long time, and it's all runny. <laughs> it's, ugh, just the worst. Men listening, you, you think that, like Kai said, you're going to look like Jason Satham. I'm going to break it to you. You're going to look like Colin Mockery. Do you want to look like Colin Mockery? No. Go to 4 There's no waiting room. There's no awkward doctor visits. You answer a few quick questions and a literal doctor, a medically trained man or woman, will review and prescribe you and then ship everything that you need directly to your door for hair loss, skin care, and all the sexual wellness products that you men can handle. I'm not saying this will change your life or give you a peace of mind. What I am saying is that two-thirds of men by the time they reach middle age, lose their hair, you don't want to be those men. You want to be the the part of the 33% who don't. So when you enter a room, all the bitches look at you. Charlie, why don't you tell them, as a man, I think all of us here are men, mm -hmm. what they can get Board certified. with this special podcast offer. So the official listeners, official uh, nice, beautiful, voluptuous hair listeners, you can get a free tri free month trial of everything you need to keep your hair for just five dollars today. So see the website. That's forhims.com slash official. Charlie, you personally spoke with a co-founder and he gave you some uh, penis pills. Did they work? Like a charm, Kaya. Like a charm. Beautiful. Well, his girlfriend is happy. You should get happy to forhims.com slash official. If you're a man, you'll do it. If you're a woman, you'll still do it. Forhims.com slash official. <laughs> Fuck. I actually, I had, a, I had something we could talk about. Andrew and I brought this topic up one time, and I thought it'd be a good topic to toss around on the podcast. Andrew asked Never. what the gayest experience I'd ever had uh, was, yeah. and I thought that could transition well into the podcast, if you guys have any okay. interesting stories. I'll go ahead and start, since I already answered his question. So for me, uh, when I was really young, uh, it must have been like seventh grade middle, you know, in middle school, mm -hmm. I wanted to watch some porn before going to class, and I had like an hour... And I threw on some normal stuff, and I'd always been a fan of lesbian stuff. And this morning, I'm, I just didn't get a boner. And I started to really panic, like, damn, am I gay? I really might be gay. So then I threw on other <laughs> porn that had penises in it, and I stared at the cocks, like, really intently to see if I got a boner. And I didn't get a boner then either, so I thought something was clinically wrong with me, and I was really scared for you the whole day. You called your dad. Show me your dad. cock, dad. <laughs> Does this get hot? Dad, am I gay? Yeah, so that, that'd be my answer. That's a good answer. Uh, that's that's kind of innocent. Yeah. yeah, it's nothing. All right, let's go in Jack order then, except Charlie, since he who, who skipped uh, the line. 
I think yeah, he was he was so he, he was, was so, so adamant. He wanted... Me first, me first. <laughs> I want to go. I'll start. Oh, are we having gay stories? Oh, come on, let me go first. <laughs> I had these so on the back burner for years. I have it on, written on my hand here. Uh, so back in like early high school, maybe early high school, end of primary school. I've never been attracted to men, by the way. I never. Uh-huh. had any kind of attraction to penises or penile objects or anything to do with men. Uh-huh. <laughs> anything that looks like a penis, uh-huh. I, I fucking no, hate nothing. it. Uh-huh. That's because Jar Jar Banks is asexual. But in high school, uh, I did drama class. I have no goddamn and... idea. Oh, okay. Sorry. Wait, what, what'd you say? It's because Jar Jar Banks is asexual. I thought maybe that's the actual lore since he looks like an amphibian. So maybe he's like... I possibly I don't, I don't actually know maybe if you look up the rule 34 you'll find I just something. wanted to make a joke that Jackson wants to fuck aliens from Star Wars That's he all. does I mean some of them some of them dude yeah oh man the blue ones oh baby mm-hmm. I don't oh, know yeah. what they're called but oh absolutely all right, anyway back in, back in high school Ray? I did drama class <laughs> I did drama class technically aliens because yeah, they're not really very they're true. Uh, from a different yeah. universe Anyway, uh, sorry, fuck. Jackson. Sorry. Yes, drama class. Drama class, there was this one guy, basically, that would just constantly sing romantic songs to me. I, I didn't really know him at that point. Uh, he, he was just infatuated <laughs> with me, I guess. And I guess th- that's the gayest experience I've had. I wasn't into it or anything. Did you at least did anything come from it? I, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, no. I, I, just said, I just said, please stop eventually because it just kept happening every single drama class that's pretty gay i don't think most gay people get serenaded by men that's impressive well i don't know if it was just he was just fucking around or if it was an actual attraction oh yeah he's just pretending to (laughs) love you (laughs) (laughs) he's constantly serenading you (laughs) they were it was if you're out there serenading man (laughs) they were beautiful songs he's still singing today (laughs) he's still writing you ballads I wish I could hear your old again. address. Uh, but yeah, that's the gayest experience. Uh, mine's, mine's pretty straightforward, but also extremely gay. Um, so I mentioned <laughs> earlier on the podcast, I think, that I had like a best childhood friend from when I was like four years old to like eight. <laughs> it's going to finally come out that you were actually gay with him? No. Yeah. You weren't just saying I mean, that you were gay? Well, it depends on how you define actually gay, but we were kids, so even then. Well, you spent four semesters living as gay men. Maybe that <laughs> hey, that was pop. that was a summer and a half. <laughs> no, so this was this was that childhood friend who was my literal like be- like he lived next door. He was my best friend in the world from when I was like four till about nine or ten. But so he took advantage of you. Well, no. So the whole point was when he we was were 18. super young. When we were super young, we would, uh, I mentioned on the podcast we would just like have a bath or shower together. Like it wasn't anything weird. It was like, oh, That's I'm at his. Gay. I'm at his house or vice versa, you know, like whatever. Mm. But uh, the, the gay part starts where I distinctly remember we sword fought a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> p- you pissed over each other. No, we were like kids playing a game. What? That's not sword fighting. That's not sword fighting. Yeah, sword fighting is when you... That's when you... Touch wieners. What? No, yeah, we were clashing wieners like sabers. Yeah. Oh, that's even gayer. I, no, sword fighting over here is where you piss... No, and, that's, like, that's, that's called no, that's, extremes. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. ghost busting. It's yeah. <laughs> there's so many different terms. Yeah, I no, thought ghost busting was when you come on one another. No, yeah, that's definitely ghost busting. <laughs> All right, so wait, yeah. where you shove, the, yeah, where you shove the come in the ass. I usually just called it laser or uh, I sabering. call it gay sex. <laughs> no, yeah, but man. yeah, no, sports. we were. Uh, I distinctly remember we would be in the shower or the bath or wherever, and. Before we got in, just it'd be like, "Hey, you want a sword fight?" Or like, I mean, we were like, we were we were literally like five years old. Like our imagination was yeah, the okay. limit. It'd be like, "Oh, I'm Darth Vader, and you're Obi Wan Kenobi. Take that or whatever." Like that's literally what it was. We were just fucking just, around. Sounds like you're trying to convince yeah. yourself. I mean, yeah. I don't care. I'm very. I'm, I don't give it, a fuck. It, it was. I'm not denying it. It absolutely it was, happened. It wasn't a penis. It, it was a sword. It was Excalibur. And then I put it in my mouth and went, "Oh, you got me, Long John Silver." <laughs> no, like I mean, like it was. Just, it was literally just kid shit. Like just we were just messing yeah. around. Yeah. I, no, I never did that with any kids. I also didn't do that with kids. And that's How about fine. You, I'm not ashamed of it, but that's yeah, that's what happened. Oh, and that what time about? I fucked that man. But we don't have time well, for that, uh, Kaya. Well, yeah, no, well, you kind of stole my answer. I just also had oh, just a juvenile... Do. Juvenile no, sword fighting, see? Yeah! Not the, you know, not specifically sword fighting, but the, you know, the whole... You're two boys, you're alone in a room, you just go, Hey, you show me yours, I'll show you mine. Yes! 
That's exactly. It just fucking happens, right, Kaya? It's not like a. It's not like you're trying to be overtly weirdly sexual or anything. It's just like you just do shit. Well, you're, you sound like you're overcompensating with, with your excuse. Like, <laughs> yeah. <given space. laughs> it's not gay. <laughs> Taking deep breaths. <laughs> uh, uh, Kaya, tell me I'm not gay. But no, t- definitely not. You yeah. just at that age, especially back then kids we had cds you know that sort of stuff like he'd go oh you know yeah i found porn on this cd there's porn on this cd and well, you know and then you'd watch it together in a room mm-hmm. that sort of yep. stuff you it's joke, not, yeah. Yeah. wait you, would you would you jerk off together have you ever jerked off with another man in the room yeah but well not man i, I was a boy oh, i was yeah, a boy. little boy yeah. not my uncle wasn't there watching or supervising <laughs> yeah. I, I, i've <laughs> never done that very I've bad form kaya from bad form what did i teach you what did I teach you? <laughs> That's a uh, you just re- yeah. You just reminded me before we move on. I, I'd sure. like to share another one. That just reminded me though. <laughs> I used to think growing up meant being comfortable seeing everyone's penis. So I, I like as I started to get older. <laughs> Who like, told you that? It was just like kind of what I <laughs> gathered. Cool. It's what I gathered from like sports movies where all the guys shower together and like their cocks are just oh. flopping everywhere, not on screen but implied. So I used to think yeah. growing up you're supposed to have your dicks out around other men. So when I was like eight. Or maybe it was probably younger than eight. I was like, all right, well, I think I'm at that age where we, we got to start showing each other's penises. So, like, after <laughs> swimming, usually, I just, like, you know, take off my bathing suit and start pissing in front of my friends. <laughs> like, in the bushes, not at them or anything. I wasn't some type of, like, uh, I think you meant in the pool. Like, you got out of the pool and started pissing into the pool. <laughs> no, just, like, all in the over them. No, I just, like, would have been quite the alpha move. <laughs> yeah. No, I just... I Look just, who's a man now. I <laughs> just take off the bathing suit and go to, like nearby plants making sure they could still see my penis and the stream but yeah so you face towards them then i was if i piss outside i always face away from people well yeah, yeah but that's I common was, courtesy yeah, yeah really. i thought it was part of growing <laughs> you're up looking friend in the eyes while you're pissing outside <laughs> did you ever just start pissing on people and going i'm an adult now <laughs> i can't say i ever got to that point i started to realize you know maybe this probably isn't what growing up's about voice crack <laughs> Maybe there's a yeah. bit more to growing up than pissing on people and showing yeah. them my pee-pee. If there is, I haven't found it yet. <laughs> They're so fucking stupid, man. God damn. Yeah. Like, when I sometimes... I know, Charlie, this, you, you keep making a point of this, but sometimes I do remember faint memories of myself thinking as a child, and God, we're so stupid. Mm-hmm. Such stupid creatures. And it's amazing, because you never, like feel yourself not getting stupid you know what i mean you don't feel yourself yeah. getting the the sense to not do things yeah. and such you yeah. just kind of well that overnight you look like back a, it's like what it's it's like inherently part of remembering things that I, I can't actually remember being there or being you know consciously remember myself doing those things i can only look back on them it just i don't know i don't know how to describe it it's just fucking weird Kids are fucking retarded. Yeah. God damn. We I mean, every time every kids. time I read that fact that says that, you know, your brain isn't fully developed until you're 25 or so, I go, oh, that can't be right. Really? Is, is that a fact? Is that a medical fact? Do they have studies on this? Is that science? That sounds so late. 25? Is that when your brain is really at its peak? But then I think back and I go, yeah. yeah I, have that, yeah. I have that same thought too. Like I'll, I'll constantly see things like, you know, these watches cost so much money and, you know, I'm like, you can get that same quality <laughs> that on a movement watch. That can't be accurate. Yeah. You yeah. can get the same quality for a much better price. Wait, what the fuck? This price is bullshit. Yeah, it makes no sense yeah. when I can get a movement watch that this, looks just as good, but so much cheaper. It, it just doesn't make any sense. Wait, you're telling me it's four to $500 at a department store? I distinctly remember seeing it at movement for $95. I experimented with my friend and he had a movement watch. And it was better than mine. That makes mine. it okay, then. <laughs> I used to compare watches with my gay. friends. I thought it was part of growing up. <laughs> I remember when I had a baby watch. Now I have an adult watch. And it just feels like it fits better. <laughs> Is it circumcised? <laughs> <laughs> no, Kaya, it has a sports timer. They didn't remove that at manufacture. Ooh. <laughs> They're a, they're a watch company, if you haven't figured that out. They, they make some of the best watches that you can buy online. So, as Andrew said, you're looking at... Just like ninety-five dollars, they start at ninety-five dollars at a department store. You're looking at roughly four hundred to five hundred bucks for these kinds of quality watches. 
They're just, uh, honestly, they're some of the finest watches I've ever seen. I wear my movement watch every day. They're, it's classic design, quality construction, and styled minimalism. So if, you, if you're if you into all those things, you can't go wrong with a movement watch. You guys like your movement watches, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I use Charlie, the you did box. a... You did a ringing endorsement of him before we started recording. You, you yeah. might as well re- repeat it then. I mean, yeah, fair enough. Uh, so I have I have a movement watch, and a lot of my friends, like when they see that, be like, "Is that a movement watch?" I'm like, "Yeah." They're like, "Well, fuck, I love that company." That's that's a hundred percent true story. Andrew's been there for poker nights, like yeah. one of the first Completely times. Completely correct. Like, I wore it. Yeah. You're a nice. Well, to keep in tradition, Charlie, can you spell out MVMT for us? In movie title? Well, I mean, I can spell out MVMT. Any, you just did it for me. <laughs> well, yeah, I, well, uh, fuck. Okay, what is something obscure he should use as a topic to spell? Vegetables. Yeah, there yeah that's go. a good one. Oh, uh, gay men. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically gay men. Mr. Spacey. <laughs> uh, Voldemort. He was gay, right? <laughs> that, that counts. How oh, yeah. it, how, what kind of straight person has no nose? Come on. Yeah, for real. It's the strongest wizard on the planet, and he doesn't have a side hoe or, or a hoe. No, come on. Am I doing vegetables or what? Vegetables. What, 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 vegetables? Either one. Right, just so, mix, uh, mix and gay, match gay men and vegetables. Gay vegetables. Wizards is too easy. You just paralyzed. You can just say Merlin twice. Oh, no. I was just gonna say Merlin. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, vegetables. Go. Um. So that's M V M T M for. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I hear typing. Don't Google I hear it. typing. Yeah, don't Google that's it. That's not me. Is yeah, there a single? Looking, f- no, I'm looking it up. <laughs> is there a single fucking vegetable that starts with M? Oh, yeah. I'm looking it up, buddy. I'm, I know I'm one going... off the top of my head, and I, it's from fucking uh, Smoothie King. You have no excuse. I'm looking up list of vegetables. <laughs> Mango. Oh, Jesus, that's a fruit. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Oh, um, I don't even see anything with M. Oh, mushrooms. That's not a vet. Oh, that does. That's count. a fungus, well, isn't it? It, it well, counts, I think. It says in parentheses. It says actually a fungus, not a plant. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, then what there is, is no M. Yeah. What is yours, Andrew? Wait, I'm double checking if it's a vegetable. It might be. A well, fruit. what were you gonna say? You can use a subgroup of the legumes, is which is mung beans. Uh, that was my next. That's where I was going next. <laughs> Fuck. I, I'm you, wrong. It's a fruit. It's not a vegetable. What was it though? What was Mango it? steam. Well, I said, well, yeah, yeah. Man- yeah. No, not yeah. mango, mango steen. They are two different things. Oh, mm. okay. Well, I, I have both M's, Charlie. First is mung beans. Okay. Do you have Ooh. a V? Uh, Vegetables. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. Just all of them. All of them together. Jesus, is Very single- succulent <laughs> carrot. <laughs> <laughs> broccoli. The, the fastest broccoli no. alive. Damn it. No, we have mung beans. Very succulent carrots, and there was uh, shit. I just had an M. Where the hell did it go? Marjoram. I don't know what a marjoram is. All right, and tomato. Shit, is tomato a fruit? Tomato. Tomatoes are a fruit, I think, by definition. Yeah. Wow. MVMT couldn't be harder for vegetables. Holy shit. Two. Tomato. No, wait. It's well. It says biologically as a fruit, but taxed as a vegetable. And it's as taxed. we know, the government is the man. Yeah. So tomato yeah. is a yeah. tomatoes. Uh, tomato. Well, there's a tea. Uh, com there's another official. tea though. They're tat soy. And the Wikipedia article for tat soy is literally one sentence. Mm, and it, it just says tat soy is a vegetable. It says All right, so the is point, an Asian the vegetable. Is- it can also be called Spanish mustard. Oh, oh well. sorry, spinach mustard. <laughs> sorry, I, uh, I offended all the Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. The point is, get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns. Go to mvmt.com slash official. Check all out right. their expanding collection. Join the movement. Uh, I'll do it. I'm sure all They're the vegetables great. helped you remember the MVMT. It was one hell of an endorsement for vegetables. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> enjoy those obscure fucking vegetables out there. So, I don't know if anyone else has a I don't know if anyone else has a topic, but if we want to backtrap, I just thought that might be interesting. More gay you, stuff? I'm, I, well, yeah, kind of. I'm sure all of you have this that whole like secret pornography you had as a kid, where you would get your yeah, fix yeah, things you had to hide under on. the bed or whatever. I used to. I, I used to use my dad's good, porn. Yeah, if we had any good stories about that. Because I have, I have a decent like a, one. Do you mean like secret stash or something? Yeah, you, like it, yeah. like so as a kid, when we were kids, the internet wasn't as... I mean, like there was porn on it, but it wasn't as easy to get to or, okay. you know, whatever. So when you were a little kid, 
obviously there was some porn in your life at some point. I'm just wondering if you had any interesting, <laughs> like, I'll I never am, forget about her. Yeah. I, I was wondering if you had interesting, like I am a child and this is where I get my fix stories. So yeah, I have like uh, one or two. I, it was yeah. one movie in particular that I would constantly go back to and just pretend that I liked as a movie, even though I never saw past the, the titty part. It was called used cars. There's one scene in that movie <laughs> where there's a bunch of women Dancing on cars with their tits out, but there's little pasties on them, and I thought that really added a lot to titties in general. So I was like, "Yeah, this is good." This is good. I'd never seen a titty with a nipple though, because I'd been conditioned to just think they were pasties. Yeah, pasties. Mm. And Mine was my my dad had a uh, porno magazines on top of the fridge. He thought that would keep me away from it, so he kept them on top of the fridge. And I used to just climb up on the counter, you know, like you know, you know, in those cartoons where like. It's a cookie jar on top of the fridge. Yeah. In this case, it was just porn, full frontal, full, uh, like explicit porn. And, and, I used to just and then you open the pages and it was full of cookies. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just every morning, like I'd wake up super early before any parents were awake <laughs> and I'd just storm out into the kitchen, climb up on the counter and get up onto the, on top of the fridge and just read the porn. It was good. Still do to this day. Did he, did, he ever refre- <laughs> did he ever refresh the magazines for you to keep it fresh? <laughs> I, I don't actually know. I can't remember how that like finished or anything. These are like stick that. you gotta get new ones. Finished. Did your mom care at all that you just had open pornography on top of the fridge? I don't think they well, they knew the porn was up there. I don't think they knew that I was, you know, mm. finding it. Yeah, but she didn't care that like anyone could walk in and be like, ah, oh, Bill, I see your pornography's there. I was it, no, it was it was kind of like hidden at the back of the fridge. Uh, right? Okay. It, it wasn't. It wasn't visible even mm-hmm. as like an adult. Jackson was like fridge. bouldering to get it. <laughs> he was tearing the kitchen apart. Where's the porn? Pretty much. It was really dangerous. The more I think of it, because there was a stove right there, like next to the fridge. So I was standing on the stove. Oh wow. How old <laughs> and, were you? Uh, like reaching up to the fridge. I was probably like seven, six, maybe. Oh. Yeah. You're still a little tiny. Yeah, really young. Uh, so for mine, I had a friend, I don't even remember his name now, this was so long ago, but he came from a very religious family, and, uh, we were hanging out one day, just, you know, being kids, whatever, I think we were, sword fighting. uh, probably eight, well, yeah, we were sword fighting, and then we went, hey, how old are we? And For Jesus. He was your no, this was, this was a different Let's friend. Let's make a cross! <laughs> this was a different friend. Uh, how many friends did you sword fight with? No, we weren't actually sword fighting. It was part of the initiation into the group. To be my friend. It's like Fight Club. It's like Fight Club. You gotta prove your worth to be my friend. Uh, No, so this was... Well, if it was Fight Club, you'd just be sword fighting yourself. Exactly. Well, that's what I do every day. Um, So, so this... Oh, I think I was like 10, around, around 10, probably... Uh, different friend, not the one from the sword fighting story. So he, his parents were super religious, very, very super strict religious family. Um, mm-hmm. And I would go over and hang out and whatever, and we fuck around and whatever. And he had bunk beds. And at one point, we were just sitting in his room, and our moms were, I mean, we were like 10, so obviously your mom, we were, they were in the other room doing some shit, like at the kitchen table. And eventually, he's just Lesbian like, shit. he's just like, you want to see something cool that I have? Like the typical, you know, oh, look at this thing I shouldn't have, like that a kid does. And he he pulls out from the bottom of his bed this VHS tape of of it, porn, but it's specifically like softcore torture porn. So like the front woman on the picture has like a ball gag in her mouth and is wearing like a really tight corset and she had giant titties. And then when you flipped it on the back, you would see like clothes pins on her nipples. And this one woman, oh, you like, got the good shit early. Yeah, dude. like this this one woman, wow. like propped up in this fucking like mechanical horse or whatever, where they they're forced to bend over and shit. And like, there's mm-hmm. a woman in a dominatrix outfit with a whip and full boots. It, it was it was basically BDSM porn. Yeah, yeah and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. as a kid, that I had half no idea what the fuck I was looking at, but the other half w- you- was like, oh look, titties. I'm going to keep looking Did at Did you this. report him to the police? Well, no. What would happen is we'd sit in his room and we'd just pretend, we'd put on a video game just to pretend we were playing it and we'd literally just sit next to each other just staring at this fucking VHS tape. You for, never played it? Well, yeah, well no, what? because we you couldn't get away with that. How? <laughs> we we were being the sound super... Off. No, the, if his mom walked in, we're fucked. The whole point is if she we heard her walking in, we could just shove the tape under the bed. Yeah, but you could just be like, oh, what? This isn't Star Fox 64. You don't understand. <laughs> you don't understand. Like, he came from a very, very strict 
Christian where family. Did, like even just how did he get that? Then it must have came from the. Well, house. that's he where the story the... gets interesting. Oh. So eventually, oh. I asked him. I think before one time I was leaving, I was like, "Where'd you even find this?" And he's like, "I found it in my dad's study or office or whatever." Now the the key important, the key important point of that detail is. Later in life, I heard this from my mom. I think it was while I was still a kid, like a couple years later, because we just stopped hanging out with them one day, just flat out stopped going over. And apparently, mm-hmm. and I think that video might have sparked it, he got beat by his mom for having it, and then eventually his parents got divorced. Because, Committed like... to the BDSM. But, yeah, and I, the, the divorce... There were a lot of, like, rumors or inklings that it was because the father was, like, really jonesing on that pornography fix. So, mm. I, I may have been instrumental, because I, I distinctly remember asking to see the VHS, like, four times while I was over there. <laughs> so, I don't know if he got caught because of me or what, but I don't know. But, yeah, that's my wow. story. That's nice. You should ask him if it was your fault. Oh, I'm sure he's dead. <laughs> Was his mom hot? Oh, God, no. She was a very large woman. Oh, well, there uh, you yeah. go. There's yeah. a problem she, right there. Jesus want, can't cure that. I want you to imagine, like, when I say the word fat lady secretary, exactly what that looks like, that's what she looked like. Mm. Yeah. Just just everything. Top to bottom. Mid-50s. Just curly, awful hair, big glasses. Yeah. So not someone you'd want to tie up? No, not at all. Not someone I'd want to put clothes pins on her nipples. So that's that's mine, Kaya. Uh, well, I, I guess it's a story about how I acquired my stash, which was digital. But I used to always visit my cousin on the over like summer, and that's so uh, mm-hmm. yeah. And he was much older than me, like ten or fifteen years older than me. I think he is. I'm not entirely sure, but point is, I always used to play on his computer. I play like Never Winter Nights which I absolutely loved playing on his computer. But one day, for some reason, I just decided to snoop through his files. And then for the first time of my life, in my life, I saw actual porn. I don't know how, how old I was, but it was, you know, when you're that young and you've only really ever seen a tit here, maybe a tit there, you know, wet yeah, t-shirt. Yeah, it, dude, it's just, it. it's like seeing the face of God. It's like, well, <laughs> yeah, I know. I can still smell that day. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely beyond reason just that that sh- sudden surge of feelings that you get in your body it's yeah. like learning about the fourth dimension for the first time you go like what there's more than three what is happening and i just felt this evolutionary animalistic impulse to masturbate it was an actual porn it was like it's photos of videos and f- videos that he had downloaded into a folder of like you know, just naked women, which to me, you know, today it wouldn't even get me half hard. It wouldn't even get me like morning piss wood. But at the time, it made me like a steel rod. Like you couldn't melt that with the fucking jet fuel. So I couldn't even be bothered to lock the room. I didn't even think of that. I simply laid down on his bed, straight my <laughs> neck, looking at the screen, which was like, it was, I don't even, I, I think like one of the photos I really liked was three black ladies in <laughs> Santa costumes, but they were all naked. So by Santa costume, I mean, I really mean just the Santa hat and right. they were all naked. And he was, oh God, I don't know if he's listening to this. He's in Saudi Arabia right now, but he was really into fisting porn. <laughs> there was a lot. Well, if he's in Saudi Arabia, he's probably being put to death for having that right there now. There were so many women with their fists up other women's vaginas. So many photos of that common theme. And I loved it too. I was like, what? And I just, I jacked off to that with the door unlocked and just links, you know, starfishing sprawl on his bed, just jacking off to those photos. And at, uh, at some point I burned his folder onto a CD. <laughs> so I could w- look at it later at my own place. Fuck yeah, man! You were yeah. hardcore. That's solid. Yeah, you <laughs> you, you 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 found the treasure. Yeah, you found the treasure at the end of the rainbow and took it. Uh, yeah, that was beautiful. Uh, that's smart, man. So is that still part of your collection? No, I I don't know what happened to the CD. I don't mm-hmm. I don't still like use CDs, Jacks, like nostalgically jack off. No, I th- yeah, I, but I, I thought you would have like transferred the contents over or something well, no, I, I don't even know how old i was like maybe 12 13 I'd, i haven't kept the porn collection for half of my life yeah, 
I, I know. At the start of this story, I thought you said this was this is the story of how I started my collection. So I thought oh. that. Well, no, I, I thought said like Hawaii, you had a, a collection. How I acquired been, my yeah. stash, which at the time was my stash, and it was one porn CD yeah, of right. my cousin's porn. <laughs> Did you title yeah. it "My Cousin's Porn"? No, I don't. I, don't even, Thanks, I, I wasn't that obvious. I would have. I'm sure. I don't know what I wrote on the CD, but I bet you I, it was either a Linkin Park album title or it was Warcraft Three, <laughs> because that's what was big at the time. <laughs> well, that's risky. You don't want to choose something big because yeah. what if somebody Lin Someone takes could the take file? That. Hey, this isn't Linkin yeah. Park at all. That's fine. I didn't or have Warcraft friends. 3. No, no one was gonna snoop through my stuff. Like, oh, he has Warcraft Three and it's cracked. You guys remember why not just name it porn? Holy shit, that's a yeah. throwback right there. You guys remember getting CDs and having to like copy the crack over to the file? Oh god, yes. You, you still do, don't you? No, it doesn't it games. doesn't I just if they do that. Anymore. Most I I think most I piracy has to have gone down. I don't know a whole lot of people still do that. I and mean, even I've then seen, there's a whole community on uh, Reddit based around cracking and piracy know, but and they're so adamant about it too it's of crazy. course but these days it's just so much more convenient to just chill out the five bucks during a sale and get the game right and even then Not even if, if you're a kid even if you pirate it they're just so good about it now the the pirates literally give you an installer that takes care of the cracking thing yep piracy is far beyond any anti-piracy measures by this point for the most part yeah. There's it's only insane. one that even gives them a struggle, and it usually only Denova. takes like two weeks. Yep. That's have the you? Uh, that's a that's a decent topic. I I've dived into. Have you seen any of your favorite anti piracy measures in games? Because I think there's some really funny ones. If you guys have looked what? into that. Oh, oh you mean yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some really good ones out there, like the, the serious Sam um, Pink yep. Spider mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, one of my favorites. That's a good one. I think the uh, Batman one was really clever. I like that. That's stuff. the one I was going to talk about, where the, yeah, the game physics just yeah, glitch out. One. Batman, uh, Ar I think it's Arkham Asylum. If you yeah. pirate it and you get unlucky, because pirates are pretty smart about getting rid of those, and you get unlucky, Batman's cape won't open, so every time you try to fly, he'll just plummet. Yeah, he just falls <laughs> the fuck down, and you can't get past one of the first parts of the game. That's awesome. That's pretty great. One of the, uh, yeah. one of the simplest ones that I think is fucking scary is, I think it's the original Pokemon, but when you go to the uh, SSN, the ship... It's literally all mm. of the game is exactly the same, but if you go to the SSN, uh, the guy who flashes your ticket in the normal game, when you give him the ticket to get on the boat, he's like, sorry, this is boarding for the SSN. Oh, I see you have a ticket. Come on. And you can go in. In the pirated version, he just says, if you like this game, buy it or die, and then lets you <laughs> on the ship. Oh, I, I thought as a kid, if I saw that, that would scare the shit out of me. Yeah. I really like when game companies have a little bit of a humor, you know, some mm -hmm. humanity to them, and they're not being assholes about it. It's not like some, you know, maybe you could imagine a game company going like, oh, you're going to torrent this? Let's just upload our own torrent. It's going to be a virus. So if anybody tries they to torrent that. our game, yeah, they've game, done that they're too. Really? Okay, see, th those guys are cunts. I, you know, because people are going to pirate. There's like 12 year olds out there who just cannot afford it. Just be silly with it. it, it don't be a dick. Mm -hmm. I don't see that point, man. I think piracy has gone down a lot. I don't have data on this. I haven't looked it up. But if I had to guess, I would say it has gone down, at least in the realm of uh, design software. Because a lot of companies now do something that they have not done 10 years ago, which is offer demos. A lot of them offer a free trial for 30 days. And also, mm -hmm. 10 years ago, we did not have student licenses. At least not that I ever heard of, right? And these days, I think that's a really, really good thing to do. It's great that, you know, so shout out to all the companies that Agreed. cut you a fucking break if you're a student, cut you some slack. That's nice of them to do. I think that deserves a shout out. It's, it's also smart. Yeah. Definitely. Digital. It's nice, man. It's just, you know, this program, yeah, it costs 900 bucks, but if you're a student, you get it free for like three years. That's so fucking nice of you to do. That's genuinely nice. Yeah, I completely uh, agree. Digital distribution has also cut piracy hugely. Like just with how good Steam and all those others have gotten to make get games. Like even with Absolutely. that, piracy's gone way down. You know what hasn't gone down though? TV show piracy. I think that's gone completely up with how much. Oh yeah, fucked. I'll I'll defend that though. You know why? Because see, to, I don't know how it is in Australia, but you, uh, Jax, uh, sorry, Andrew, Charlie, you are in America, so. If you get a Netflix subscription, and I get a Netflix subscription, not only am I paying more because I pay in euros, 
mm-hmm. but I also get like their catalog slashed in half because of region yes. blocking. So if I mm-hmm. search for the same, same show, yeah. I'm not gonna get it. And yeah. Amazon Prime specifically, such a cunt about it. They don't tell you beforehand, at least on Netflix, when you search for it, it doesn't show up in your results. So you know, okay, I don't have this, I guess, in Germany. Whereas on Amazon Prime, it'll show up. It'll even give you the green button that says, watch now, or whatever the fuck it says. You get the green button, it says, watch. It's part of your Prime subscription, watch now. And you click it, the player loads. You get the mm-hmm. credits even. You get, Like for one or two seconds, you get the int- uh, the credits of the movie, and then it says, oh, sorry, it's region blocked. That's such a cunt thing to do i don't understand the whole when you want to support it too it's such bullshit yeah i just don't understand the the purpose of region lock under any circumstances it just seems like it's it's literally just yeah it's just money grubbing different companies own the rights in different countries yeah Yeah. it's basically just hey you have a show i know like i'm you know i i know a thing or two about the chinese market i'm gonna be better at marketing to the chinese so sell me the right to yeah you know uh put this on air in china and that's it mm-hmm. but you don't fucking know you know maybe it's gonna be coming out five years later that's all it boils down to is fucking money and i hate it i hate it so much it's a fucking it's pre- joke it's pretty silly though i can't imagine the deals bringing that much money you definitely oh, make fuck, are you kidding me People a deal like over that? here the the only way to get game of thrones over here legally is to buy a 60 dollars subscription to fox basically oh, wow. mm-hmm. you have to yeah, and that, they make a killing off that because people like you. You think average household or whatever, they're not computer savvy enough to download torrents and stuff like that, unless they've got a friend that can do it for them. Uh, so uh, they they make a lot of money from that. Just people buying like Fox just to watch Game of Thrones. Hmm. It's ridiculous, man. It's even free things they do this to. I don't understand. It's free. Like I was a I was gonna watch a TV show recently, a new. I don't think it's out yet, but they released a pilot. It's called Heathers. They're remaking an old musical, apparently, and it's, it's terrible, by the way. But point is, uh, I forgot what studio it is. It was a Paramount or one of the studios. Pilot is free. You can watch it for free, but not if you're outside of America. What am I supposed to do other than go on Pirate Bay? What do you want me to do right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wait five yeah. years until you reach some deal with some shitty fucking company so it's released in Germany. What yeah. do you want me to do? Just Answer him, Paramount, insane. in the comment section and then tell us what you Not think about that. Andrew's it's hypotheticals. E- it's even programs that are already clearly licensed for outside of the US. I was watching House of Cards. What? So, okay, you know what? Even if I granted you that you license different shows differently in different countries, but why do you have to differentiate between the seasons? Why am I? Why do I get the last oh, season of House oh, of Cards oh, six Kaya, months you just later? Hit me real hard. You just only hit me because real I'm in Germany. Fucking hard with one. I do you really hate. think I'm gonna? Hang on, I'm gonna no, let you sorry, go on. Go but ahead, just I'm, I'm asking. Do you really think I'm gonna wait six months? To watch the last season of House of Cards if I'm binge watching it, you stupid cunts. No. No. Kaya, you know what really fucks oh me in the God. ass that I hate? When I what? when everyone's like, oh, go watch this amazing show. It's great. It's on Netflix. Let's use an example. I don't know. Let's use any example. Like fucking uh Black Blacklist. I don't know. I whatever. Mm-hmm. Everyone's like, go watch Blacklist. It's the best show ever made. It's amazing. It's all on Netflix. Don't worry about it. You can just go on Netflix and watch it. And then you go on Netflix and it's like, start watching Blacklist. We have available season three to seven. What? Okay. Well, thanks. Guess I can't oh, yeah, start this man. show. Like I, that what that's what pisses me off more than anything. I've never else. actually seen Absurd. that before. There's a Usually, couple shows on oh, Netflix yeah, where happens. they just don't have the first season because of licensing, and I'm like, I, I can't start. Well, they've watching got the missing show. seasons in, bes- in between. Or I've they have some episodes yeah. of a season, I've seen but not all of seasons. them. Seasons. I've never yeah. seen the the beginning not being there. I've always I, I hate there. that shit. Yeah, I haven't seen it either, but I believe it. I usually see that they don't have the recent seasons mm-hmm. so That's Netflix also just true. has that problem where it just it feels like they only have 100 titles how come how come every time I log on I see them promote Narcos I've watched it 10 <laughs> times what, what the fuck do you want me to do <laughs> to be fair Nar- Narcos a, is pretty good it is good but I've watched it though. what yeah. do you want why are you recommended service. again to me not only that here's the scummiest thing Netflix does I don't know if Amazon Prime does it I don't know if it, the other streaming services does the, to me, scummiest thing Netflix does is they have 
every once in a while they change the thumbnail of their shows so you think it's something yep. new even yep. though it's the same fucking thing you look at it oh, oh that looks oh what is this that looks interesting oh wait narcos they just changed the fucking thumbnail one another one like that that oh. pissed me off was uh i think it was a, tri- a preview for always sunny in philadelphia and they were like we have always sunny in philadelphia the new season start the new season starts at this date or whatever and, and what they were trying to say is that the new season was out on TV, but Netflix <laughs> didn't have the new season yet. So it was this like warped advertisement saying, hey, you just watched the new season of Always Sunny. Come watch Always Sunny. All, everything but the new season on Netflix. When, it, when all I wanted was the new season. God damn it. Fuck all of you. That being said, here's the disclaimer. This podcast is meant for entirely comedic purposes. Uh, when we say that we... We you know, apologize. No, no, we don't apologize for nothing. It's just a part oh, of a okay. comedy skit. So none of us have ever used any illegal means to watch TV shows. Oh, yes. Uh, that being said, right. I need to take a piss. Uh, well, we while apologize he's, for pirating. While he's pissing, we can go to our next sponsor. Uh, Netflix.com. Oh, fuck. I'm going to piss as well. I'll be right back. I, oh, <laughs> amateurs, I, I snuck really? a pee in. Don't tell him, Andrew, but I snuck a pee in. Did you really? Yeah. Derek, when? Um, when Kai was talking about, like, a, I think it was Netflix, I snuck a pee pee in. And Kai is editing oh. this episode. Kai, I fucking, I snuck a pee pee in when you were talking about Let's talk shit about, about Kai right now. He's going to leave this in. You Dude, I, bro. Dude. Oh. Dude, I pranked him. I bet you he doesn't even watch Rick and Morty. What? Bro. Dude, what a fucking loser. That's what I'm fucking saying. I'm going to squanch him real good. <laughs> No, don't squanch on him, bro. He's oh, our friend. Ah, oh, bra, but dude, yeah. bra. You gotta show him mercy. Yeah. He's so anyway, to... that's why I believe the economy Belize is set to recover in the next five to seven years. Oh, hey, Kaya, how you doing? Hey, man, I hate socialism too. Jackson, do we have any questions from patrons? Jackson's dude, gone. He fucking you got fucking break. Jackson with P two, bro. Oh, Ooh, roasted. Yeah. Fucking wreck. Top with pants down. We gotta make John. this less embarrassing. Do you want a sword fight, Andrew? Oh, baby. <laughs> uh, only if you jack off in my bed to my porn. I would. Oh. Seal of approval on your porn. Would you ever, what, Andrew, what would it take for you to at this age sword fight with me? Honestly, how many dr- How much would no, you have to I'd drink? Just ask politely, I'd do it. Okay, well, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have no gay intentions. Okay, okay. So right now it would be I'll I would be Darth do it. Vader. I would do it, but I'd want some posterity from it. Like if we did it for a comedy video, or if we were just doing stupid shit, I wouldn't do well, it. Well, we out can't of blue, put though. it on YouTube. <laughs> put it on what Vimeo, the artistic YouTube. <laughs> That's what, true. What is it? <laughs> We were just talking about how as long as you call something artistic, you could put a throbbing, veiny cock yeah. on. Video. That's funny. That's actually funny. When I uh when I was in college. When I was in college, I took a video editing course. It was more like the artistic side of it. It was an arts course. Um, and the, our professor on the first day was showing us examples of like, he's like, these are to get your minds going and see what you want to do. And he put on this like music video where it started at the top and the camera would just slowly pan down and be like a never ending series of a liquid traveling through things. Like it would go through a flask and then it would go down a, a bowl into a funnel and then kind of like a Rube Goldberg machine, but it's always flowing mm. liquid downwards. And then eventually you see yeah, it right. going in a woman's mouth. And, and I, I'm just like, Oh my God, I'm going to see some fucking pussy, aren't I? And then it just keeps panning. And eventually it just shows all the way down. And the next place the liquid goes is you just see her pissing it out. And I was amazed. I was like, God bless Vimeo, the website we need. You couldn't have given me a better segue into what I wanted to talk about. I sent you guys that video. So uh, to to sum it up. Which one? The one where the old lady. Pissing in a circle? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I I, I got a good segue to you. You lead in and I'll finish him off. Vimeo has so much pissing porn. It's amazing. (laughs) Someone, Someone sent me an email. That said, oh, that, oh, just this. like Andrew, yeah, just like Andrew said, uh, it was for an arts class, and the professor played a video to get their minds warmed up or something, I guess. And the the guy sent me the video that the professor played, and it's a video of an old woman in a white morph suit, but with the camel toe cut out, so you just have her full vagina, and then she has like a a fucking Frankenstein's little helper carrying her around while she's pissing on the floor in a circle. <laughs> And that's the whole act. Then when she's done pissing, mm. she uh, she gets set down and pops it up. They tell him to uh, to leave. That's art, buddy. 
<laughs> yeah. Wait, no, no, they, they, they mopped it up as well, didn't they? Or did someone yeah. behind them mop it up? I had already blown my load by then. I didn't see the end. <laughs> no, some guy was mopping up behind her. That's art. It, some kind of statement. Mm. Mm. What was your segue, Kaya? I was just going to say, uh, did you boys know that modern art is a CIA plot? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I saw that. That was really yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Jackson, put this in the... Dis- I'm editing, aren't I? Kaya, put this in the description. Modern art was it not invented by the CIA as a weapon, but basically, you know, spread by the CIA. And the reason is they were, you know, you Americans, you were in competition with the Russians. And, you know, you had this pissing contest about who was more free, who offered more freedoms. And the American idea of this was, hey, people in our country are so free, we even let modern artists do this retarded shit. So the CIA promoted the hell out of modern arts to the point where they were paid, wait, wait, wait. where they were patrons of Jackson Pollock and all of those retarded artists who were just splattering paint. So modern art existed before the CIA, though. Like, CIA yeah, but it would it? never have gotten the amount of fame that it has now organically. The CIA had to like seed that shit. Yeah, they had to literally pay. Uh, you know, they they used. Uh, proxies to pay for art exhibits and such for modern and, art to and promote you all this laugh ridiculous at me. art shit. And you all laugh at me when I show my obsession with communism and anti-communism sentiment and all that shit. You get really you find just the weirdest, wackiest fucking shit that they did to each other. It's great. This is just so deliciously ironic because the modern artists here usually are like you know anti-establishment man, fuck the man, and finding out that they're literally just a babies off the man like you're literally just the children of the cia this the products awesome. yeah beautiful beautiful irony oh i love it yeah when right, you sent that uh, article it was pretty fucking spicy to read yeah jackson put it on the screen yeah you know what never mind. <laughs> i hey 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 i did put something on the screen this was week. was it you saying i'm Ooh. not putting that on the screen oh, last week i hope it was no, no like i put the gibby week. video yeah, yeah. yeah. I well put the gibby video i'll be on. editing the video I, i'll Put it on in the you're description. You're not editing the video. You're editing Sorry, the audio. You're right. The audio. Well, can I edit the ed, uh, the description? Yeah, you can make the description. Okay. I don't give a shit about that. Yeah, I, I have the link. I'll put it in the description. It's from the Independent. It's called Modern Art Was a CIA Weapon. I mean, I, <laughs> I can just put that in the description. If nice all you're looking to change is just the is just the <laughs> link. I'll put that in for you. All right. You, did you have? Uh, a, I think oh. we got to wrap up. I've got to leave. Oh yeah, no. we're we're an hour and fifteen in anyway. Well, we're I mean, not gonna take yeah. questions. Uh, we can take one question then, but I've got to, I've really got to leave. So you said um, your plane leaves in eight hours. Where do you have to rush to? Yeah, but I've got to, yeah I've got to go to my parents because we're all going down in the same car kind of thing. Mm. But they're coming with you. So th- it's a wedding. It's not a. It's a family thing. <laughs> all right. Believe it or not, my family is going to that wedding. What? Get out of that's here. That's ridiculous. That's fucking stupid. Well, that's, I thought that's it was really like dumb. your friend from the college or something. I didn't know. I don't have any friends. Jesus. The other guy asks Charlie, so if... Oh, wait, no. That one's boring. <laughs> Take that, the other guy. <laughs> yeah, fuck no, you. Cut, Kaya, cut that one out. Uh... Uh, Olin asks, when can Love Dr. Kaya be a regular thing on the podcast? Oh, see, that's a problem. I, I, you know, I did it now with Andrew and Jackson. I think both of you liked it. It was fun. It was Time fun. just passes, man. Like, both of, with both of you, we went for over three hours. Did you guys notice? No. Not really. Yeah, it's fun, but the problem that is... sounds like Andrew did. That wasn't convincing. No, it I, sounds I more like notice. an ad read. <laughs> No, but but the thing is, I I use my Spotify playlist. I just so love Dr. Kaya. For those who don't know, is I give completely qualified advice on love issues, and you know I meant the hearts on on our on our Discord voice chat, which is you know if you're not in our Discord, you should join because occasionally when I'm drunk, I do it. But I play my Spotify, and the problem is because it's actual real music, we can't just put it on YouTube. You know, we, we can't yeah. just put it on. Uh, discord either so i don't know man i'd I love to do it it, it could officially. be a recurring thing though yeah i love to i, don't, I just but, don't know if it would be just as fun without the music i'd have to give that mm-hmm. up and it's just fun to play the titanic theme music when some guy's telling me about how he got cheated on we could buy the rights to those songs <laughs> yeah, for a million dollars yeah. yeah just for use on love dr kaya 
<laughs> I feel like doing uh, it now. But what time is it? 7 a.m. There's like one hour until the store's open. I can get some booze. It's too long. Are you not already drunk? You sound drunk. No. Well, I had a nightcap, but I'm all perked up now for some reason. Uh, Tej asks, have there been any funny or awkward interactions between guests in the secret server? No, they don't really talk outside no, not at all. That... No one says a goddamn thing. It's like a yeah. museum. Uh, what, what about what about the Nazi stuff? There was pictures of Hitler. Uh, I guess, what was that about? but they didn't really reply to anything. I think Rice Part at some point re- replied to something, but I didn't even remember what it was. Well, I, I mean, they're... Jackson dropped like one of the ad read things in there and he got self conscious. <laughs> that was about it. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Yeah, yeah. Enough, Someone was a vegetarian awkward. and they didn't like something in particular. I mean, yeah. No no, no yeah. real no yeah, real like bad experiences with guests or anything. Nothing. I'd like to answer a better question, Jackson. You've got nothing else. I've got Palm Palm Tree asks, What are each of your current goals? Do you have any goals, guys? Any specific goals for this? I was saying this, uh, goals week? or girls? I can't yeah, tell with your goals. accent. G O A L goal. Okay. Um, giving up sugar. Mm, that's a good goal. Getting yeah. bigger, not like taller or anything, but more muscular. <laughs> <laughs> I've given You're up. Pretty a- muscular though. Yeah, but I want I want more. What about you, Andrew? I want to finish a couple things before I leave for my parents on Thursday. Aww. Yeah. I want to arrive safely after my flight. Gay. Mm. Are That's you the gayest thing Jackson? you've ever done. Yeah, I've already told you I'm afraid of flying. Why does no one give Jackson shit are. about uh, being afraid? Because I'm not. I, I still go on flights. I still like man up and actually do it. Yeah, edit that out, Kai. Why does no one give Jackson shit about his phobia of flying? Because I didn't even know. Fair enough. All right. Well, that was an easy it's not answer. A phobia. I just don't like flying. Sounds like a phobia. Yeah, it sounds like you're fucking terrified. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you're lying, loser. <laughs> All right, someone wrap it up. All right, well, that. Uh, thanks. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> thanks to everyone for watching this week's episode of the official podcast. We appreciate everyone watching, and we appreciate your support. If you're supporting us on <laughs> Patreon, that's patreoncom slash the official podcast. Uh, thank you. Feed us. Good night. Bye. Thanks. We love Bye, you. Everyone. Goodbye. Bye.